unknowns have always intrigued us and we are always searching for the unknowns. This is how mathematics has constantly evolved and we came up with new ways of searching for the unknowns. Trigonometry is one concept which helps us in finding most of the unknowns, at least in a triangle. And if you want to learn about trigonometry right from the very basics, then you have come to the right place and we are starting right now. Hey guys, this is Vikas Sharma welcoming you on behalf of Exponent to Success to yet another video of ours. Exponent to Success is an initiative that helps to add an exponent to your learning curve. If you are new here or if you are landing on our channel pages for the first time today, I would strongly recommend that you subscribe to our channel right now so that you do not miss out on any future content from us. And do not forget to click on the bell notification also so that whenever any new content is uploaded, it comes right into your inbox. In the previous 3-4 videos, we have been dwelling upon the concept of similarity of triangles and we also discussed some real life problems involving similar triangles. If you haven't seen those videos, you must click on the link on the top right corner of the screen and we will be taken to the video straight away. In this video, we extend our study of triangles and we come to trigonometry with the help of which we can find missing angles and missing side lengths of a triangle. The concept of trigonometry was basically derived from the Indian astronomers who knew that they were, if they were standing on earth at a particular place, let's say they were standing here, they saw, they used to see the stars going around. So the stars used to ri rise from the east, they used to go up and uh, set in the west and then they used to go around and come back and rise again from the east the next day. To measure the position of stars, if they saw a star at a particular place here, we used to see at what angle they are seeing the star and at what height is it and this formed a 90 degree triangle or a right triangle and if they could know this angle then they could find the length of each side of the triangle. Now that is possible only in a right triangle because we know that if one angle is 90 degrees and you know one angle let's call this angle theta. So if 90 degrees is known and theta is known obviously you can find this angle whatever it may be let's call that x. Because if theta is some angle, one angle is 90 degrees, then obviously x has to be 90 minus theta. Let's say we have a circle, a circle like this. Let's say we have the center of a circle here and to avoid any confusion, let's call this a unit circle. Unit circle means a circle having a radius of one unit. Now whatever position the star is at, we can measure the angle and find out uh, and we can make a right triangle and find out uh, what are the side lengths. Let me give you an example. So let's say you find a star here. You draw, draw a line from here to here and you connect this here. So what you get is a right triangle here. So if this angle, let's say it's 30 degrees, then you can find out the ratio of the sides. We know that this side, the hypotenuse, that is going to be one unit and it's always going to be one unit no matter where the triangle is formed. At this angle, you see that the base is some particular units, uh, maybe a fraction of a unit and so is the perpendicular height. Let's take another triangle. For example, if the star is here, let's make a triangle from here to here and here. So this again is a 90 degree triangle. The total angle has changed it is now not 30 let's say it's 45 degree angle so this angle also has to be 45 degrees since it's going to be 90 minus 45 so but you see how the perpendicular height of the triangle has changed as compared to the red triangle now the blue triangle is a little taller while the base has become a little shorter and let's take another triangle let's say we have the start position here we connect the center of the circle to this position and we draw another triangle a perpendicular. So this again is 90 degrees. Now if this for this angle the perpendicular height is still taller than the other two triangles and the base has become shorter. While the hypotenuse always remained one unit. So this was also one unit and this was also one unit. The hypotenuse remained the same and they found that the ratios of these sides for a particular angle they never change they always remain the same so let's say that we have a right triangle like this where this is 90 degrees and we have an angle named theta here first of all they gave names to each of these sides 
it was very important to give names to these sides because otherwise we won't understand which side are we talking about. So the side opposite to the right angle, this side was always called the hypotenuse. If you look at this angle theta, there are two sides making that angle. So one of them is the hypotenuse and other is the base. So instead of calling it the base, since this side was next to the theta angle, they called it the adjacent side. Adjacent means next to. So whenever an angle, whenever a side is next to the angle given, it's called the adjacent. And the remaining side, which was opposite to the angle given, it's called the opposite. If we need to find the ratio of these sides, it's only possible to make a few of them since it, putting all permutations and combinations into place. What's possible is that we have a ratio of opposite over hypotenuse or we could have a ratio of uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. Or we could have a ratio of opposite over adjacent. Or we could bring the hypotenuse on top, basically the reciprocals of these. So hypotenuse over opposite hypotenuse over adjacent or adjacent over opposite. If you look at these ratios very carefully and if you apply with your mind, you will notice that there are no the only six combinations of ratios that we could have. Just to make our concept a little more clear about what opposites, hypotenuse and adjacent are, let's do some examples. Let's have a a uh, few triangles, all are right angle triangles here. It has been given where the right angle is and we are given one of the angles which has been named as theta. What we have to find out is that which is the adjacent side, which is the hypotenuse and which is the opposite side. The triangles, they do not necessarily have to be standing up or straight up. They could be inclined, they could be lying down, they could be translated in any position possible. So that is why it is very important to understand which is the adjacent side, which is the opposite and which is the hypotenuse. Like I said, the hypotenuse is always the side opposite to the right angle. So if the right angle is here, this is the hypotenuse. And you will also notice, and like Pythagoras said, that hypotenuse is always the longest side in a right angle triangle. Then let's see where the angle is given. If the angle given is here, then the side next to the angle, one of them, there are two sides next to the angle. One is the hypotenuse. So the other remaining side has to be the adjacent side and the side opposite to the angle given has to be the opposite side. Here, the right angle is here. So obviously the side opposite to that is hypotenuse. One side next to this angle theta is the hypotenuse. The other side here will be the adjacent and the side opposite to the angle given will be called the opposite. Here the right angle is here, so the side opposite will be hypotenuse. The side next to the angle given has to be called the adjacent and the side opposite to the angle given has to be called opposite. Here hypotenuse is this. The side next to the angle is the adjacent and opposite to the angle is opposite. Here, right angle is here, so this has to be the hypotenuse. This has to be the adjacent. And this has to be the opposite. Here, this will be the hypotenuse. This will be the adjacent. And this will be the opposite. So no matter how the tri triangle is translated or no matter how the triangle is oriented, we can always find according to the angle given whether it's an opposite side or the adjacent side or the hypotenuse. Now let me show you something which I found on the web that if the angle of the of a triangle is changed, how the other angle changes and how the lengths of the side change. So let's have this animation here. So here if I increase or decrease the angle, so you currently see that the angle here is 30 degrees. And obviously, if this is 30 and this is 90 degrees, then the angle remaining angle has to be 90 minus 30, which is 60. And you see that if the hypotenuse here, this is a unit circle. So the radius is always one unit. So no matter where we place the side B, whichever 
part of the circle, it is always going to be one unit. AB is always going to be one unit. But notice how the side lengths change BC and AB. Currently at a 30 degree angle, BC in a unit circle is 0 0.5 while AC is 0 0.87. So the adjacent is 0 0.87 and the opposite side is 0 0.5. The hypotenuse is 1. Now let me make a smaller angle and let's see what difference does it make. So when I bring the angle down to 15 degrees, the side, the height of the triangle has now reduced to 0 0.26 while the base has increased to 0 0.97. Bringing it to 45 degrees, I see that the height has become taller, the base has become shorter and so is the case in 60 degrees, the height has become still taller while the base has become shorter. At 75 degrees, the height is now taller and the base is shorter and at 90 degrees, it is going to make a zero angle. One of the angles is going to be zero while the other angle will be 90 degrees. And same is the case here. When I start reducing the side lengths, if we are 15 degrees here, if I bring this arm AB closer and closer to AC, it will come, there will be a point when it will directly coincide on AB and on AC. And that's when the angle between the two arms is zero. So obviously if one angle is 90, so the other also has to be 90. Before we go any further, let me tell you about what the ratios are. So the first ratio that we have is called sine of an angle. It's obviously a abbreviated form. The real name is sine. The abbreviated form is sine without the E and we use an angle name in front of that. So sine theta means where theta is the measure of the angle that we are talking about. So if theta is 30, it would be called sine 30. If theta is 60, it would be called sine 60 and so on. Sine theta was the name given to the ratio opposite over hypotenuse. And why this name was given, sine actually means something curvy, so something which is like this. So this is what a sine means. So the name to this ratio was given sine because when they plotted the graph of this ratio, they found that it was going like this. And let's take the axis. Now, when it starts from 0 degrees, at a point of 90 degrees, it attains the maximum height, which is equal to 1. At 180 degrees, it becomes 0. So, there are actually two points. There are actually two angles. One is this angle right here and one is this angle right here, which will always give the same value for sine. After 180 degrees, the sine curve, it turns negative. At 270 degrees, it reaches the maximum to the downside, which is negative 1. And at 360 degrees, it again comes back to 0. And from here, the sine curve starts rising again and it follows the same path that it started from. So this pattern from here to here will be repeated. And it goes on indefinitely for whatever the angle measure is. But what we want to look at are the angles from 0 to 360. That is why we take a full circle. And any angle above 360 degrees will again be calculated as a part of another circle or as uh, 360 degrees plus something. For example, an angle of three, 390 degrees will have the same value as 30 degrees here. So since this is a curvy graph, this ratio was called the sine of an angle. And then the next ratio that we have is actually adjacent over hypotenuse and the name of this ratio is cosine or in short we can write it as cos theta where theta is the measure of the angle given. Now why is it called cosine because if you look at a right angle triangle if we are given this angle as theta then obviously the other angle here has to be the complement of that angle. Since I already told you, it's always going to be 90 minus theta. And since it's going to be the complement of that angle, that is why this name, the name of this ratio is called cosine or the complement of sine. Let's say what is sine theta. Sine theta here will be opposite over hypotenuse. 
So opposite side is here. Let's call these sides as A, B and hypotenuse is C. So if we look at sine theta, it has to be opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite side here is A and hypotenuse is the side opposite to the right angle which is C. And if we look at this angle which is 90 minus theta since it's the complement of theta and if we look at cos of 90 minus theta, it's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent side to this angle would now be the side next to it which is A and the hypotenuse is C. So you see it's again A over C. So since it's a complement of sine, it's called the cosine or cos theta. Then the next ratio that we have is called a tangent and in short we also call it as tan theta and the reason why it is called tan theta is because uh, let's go back to the circle example. If we have a circle and if we draw a line which is tangent to the circle, tangent is a line which touches the circle at only one point. So let's take a line which is tangent to the circle. Now let us look at these points here. Uh, this point here, this point here and this point here. What are the coordinates of these points? To find the coordinate of this point, let us find the ratios first. Let's say what is sine theta and what is cos theta. So in this case, sine theta will be opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side is this. Let's call that side x. and the hypotenuse is 1. So sine theta will be equal to x over 1 or the length of this side x will be nothing but sine theta. And if we want to find the cos of that angle, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is the side here. Let's call that y. So that is adjacent which is y over the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse like I said it's a unit circle so that will always be 1. Therefore, y is equal to cos theta. So if you look at the coordinates of any point, let's take this point here. To find the coordinates of this point, we will look at how much this is. This is the x coordinate and we saw, saw that y is equal to cos theta. So obviously this has to be written as cos theta and this height the height here has to be the same as x that we calculated earlier which was sine theta. So the coordinates of any point on the circumference of the circle are going to be cos theta comma sine theta. Coming back to the example that we had, why is it called tangent is, okay, we have a circle, we have a center, we have the radius, and we have the perpendicular and we have the tangent. Now suppose we have to find this height over here. What is this height from this point? So obviously if I connect these angles we can find out the height. Let's call the height as h. Now you see the hypotenuse is no longer one unit. If this is still a unit circle, then this side, the base here is going to be one unit. So if we have, if we want to find the height, which is the perpendicular, and if we know this angle, what sides do we have here? So the side this is a right angle triangle so the side opposite has opposite that is always be the hypotenuse this is the side next to the angle given so this has to be the adjacent and the side opposite to that is opposite so if we find the ratio of opposite over adjacent that will give us this height and that they called as tan theta because this line is going to be the tangent to the circle or what they wanted to find out was the length of the tangent from a given point to the circle. So this height h is the length of a tangent from a given point to the circle. That's why the ratio of this is opposite over adjacent. So coming back to where we were, we 
saw that uh, tan theta is now the ratio opposite over adjacent. And these three ratios you have to remember. In fact, there's a small memory trick also which everybody uses and that's called the so ka toa. Or if you want to say it speedily, it's just so ka toa. So so ka toa, if you just remember this for trigonometry, so ka toa, so that means S stands for sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, C stands for cos, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, and T stands for tangent or tan, which is opposite over adjacent. And then we have the other ratios also, which are this, just the reciprocals of these. The reciprocal of cos is called the secant. And why it is called the secant is because if you have to find out this length now, the secant is a line which passes through the circle at two given points. So if you want to find out this part here, or this part, since this line is passing through the circle at three at two points, it will be called a secant, and that is why this ratio is also called secant. Or in short, we say it as sec theta. It is just the reciprocal of this, so it will be one over adjacent over hypotenuse, or simply put, it will be hypotenuse over adjacent. The reciprocal of sine is called cosecant. Again, the reciprocal of sine will be hypotenuse over opposite. And the reciprocal of tangent is called cotangent. So secant is also called sec. Cosecant is also in short called cosec theta or cosec theta or simply uh, you can also write it as csc theta that's also pronounced as cosec only and cotangent the abbreviated form is cot theta and that is the reciprocal of tan theta so that has to be adjacent over opposite so you see how from soka toa we can find out any ratio that we have sine is opposite over hypotenuse cos is or adjacent over hypotenuse tangent is opposite over adjacent and if we flip these ratios so the cosecant will be hypotenuse over opposite the secant will be hypotenuse over adjacent and cotangent or cot will be adjacent over opposite so those are the basics of trigonometries we'll learn more about trigonometry in the coming videos so keep stay tuned to this channel so that brings us to an end of the video I hope you enjoyed the video thoroughly and you learned something useful out of it. In case you did, I would like to hear all about it. So just head down to the comment section below and leave in your comments for me. In case you are facing any problems with any of your questions or in case you want me to cover any specific topic, just mention that in the comment section too and I'll surely get back to you with a video. I would surely recommend that you hit on the like button below and share the video link with your friends so that they also learn something useful out of it. And in case you haven't subscribed to our channel as yet, this is the right time to do so. You see a subscribe button right in the center of the screen. Just click on that and you'll be subscribed to our channel straight away. And do not forget to click on the bell notification also so that any future content is delivered right into your inbox. As a part of your continued learning, you can click on these videos shown on the left side here. Please like and share the video. Take care. God bless.